like this car speaker bro. 1988, that's the year I was born. Lions, I love lions, and it says world traveler. <laughs> I'm a world traveler. What up guys, welcome back to the vlog. Today we're gonna start on this thing. It's been in our shop for probably about two weeks. There's been a couple things that we've done so far that we haven't shown you yet, but we did put on the over fenders. Is that correct? Is that what I say that right? No, they're not over fenders. They're actually fender flares. That is, came in, did the fender flares. And then next up is wheels and tires. So the wheels are actually done. They're back here at the shop. And uh, we're gonna show you guys that pretty soon. And then we're gonna be taking it over to Best Tire to get some tires on it. Sweet. We're actually still trying to figure out the tire sizes. We don't know any tire sizes at we all. We gotta so. figure it out. Yeah. Wheel reveal is coming soon. Defender flares, you guys will see that also. But today our main focus is gonna be disassembling the car fully and getting it wrapped. So Johnny's over there already killing it. Got the bumper off, got the uh, fender flares off and some of the trims and the side skirts are off. Door handles are off basically. Check it out. See that? Ready to go. We're gonna get into it guys. We'll show you guys the process. If you guys wanna see this car come to life over the next two days, three days, whatever it's gonna be, stick around for the vlog. Tune in, make sure you subscribe, hit the like button and uh, shoot us a comment. Say something nice to us today because it's Monday and you know how we feel on Mondays. I love Mondays though. I love Mondays too. Yay. further with the wrap than they did with the paint. So when they painted the car, they only went up to there. We're gonna take the vinyl to right in this area. All it's gonna do is make sure that the wrap looks a lot more finished and clean. Uh, I don't know, was that the right word? It's gonna look a little more, I don't know what it's gonna be. It's just gonna look better, right? Yeah, it's gonna it's look like a paint job, bro. It's gonna look like a paint job, better than a paint job. If you guys have been watching our vlogs long enough, you know about some of the tools we use, but for those of you guys that are new to the channel, I wanna show you what we're using to actually wrap this car. We got a couple different types of squeegees that we're using. Uh, they're more of a preference type of thing. This one is very, very hard plastic. These are very soft. So it really just depends on what Johnny wants to use and what I wanna use during the install. For me particularly, I like, I like to use the flexible squeegees. So you see me using that a lot. Uh, some of the hard edges, I'll use a harder car just to really get a nice tuck and push. So I'll use those. We have these banana buffers here. These are also replacements to actually cover these things up when they go bad. You'll notice when you're installing vinyl as the edges go bad, which these are already pretty bad, uh, you're gonna need to swap out the buffers just to make sure that it's not scratching the vinyl. Another thing we have here is our blades and our blade replacements. This is probably one of the biggest things in the vinyl world that gets locked on in my opinion is a lot of guys, they use blades and they go bad and it shows in their cuts. You need to make sure that you're using sharp blades when you're installing vinyl because when you're making your cuts the last thing you want to do is have a jagged edge. You're able to break these blades so I think they're able to be broken seven times. As you break through them they get sharp again so you need to get familiar with that. Another thing that we have here is the wrapped gloves. We use these things all the time and then we have our heat gun and torch. A lot of you guys ask about the difference between the two things and why we use a torch in some incidents and why we use a heat gun in other cases. For me it's more of a consistent heat from the heat gun. So when you're laying panels, maybe a big panel, and you're just trying to heat it to get it to conform, I like to use the heat gun. When you're working to shrink the material, it's really cool to use the torch because it's a lot more focused heat. Before we start wrapping any panels, we do a tack cloth. Tack cloth is a cheap product that you can buy and use before you wrap any panel, something that we do all the time here. It's standard for us. But basically what tack cloth does is it pulls up any last minute dust, debris, uh, any anything in the air, any little dust that might have got on the panel right before you lay it. Uh, it's a little sticky pad basically. So we'll tack cloth the entire surface. It picks up any residue, any dirt, debris left over right before we install. So typically this happens a minute before we lay the panel. And that's what we're gonna do right now. My man here had the little hand earlier, but I don't know where it went. Lost it. Lost it? Lost my strong hand. Hey, can you give me a hand? For me, it's like when I'm heating, I always want to make sure that that's going to be enough to relax the material, but it's not going to be enough to burn it. It's very easy to tell when you're going too far, I've, especially when you're using a heat gun, for example. Um, when the material's on the car and on the paint, you can heat it up to about 200 degrees, but when it's just like this, it heats up so much quicker um, that you can just burn right through it. But like I said, this stuff can get pretty, pretty hot. And 
you're not really gonna have any issues. What's what's something that's like 200 degrees that's like comparable? <laughs> um, you're not watching what's happening. Summertime. Oh, what the? <laughs> <laughs> That was really cool and gross at the same yeah. time. <laughs> Here we are, two hours into the project. The thing's looking amazing, right Johnny? You like it? Yeah, it looks so sick, dude. Pretty sick, so what we have done so far is we got the full quarter panel, we have the doors wrapped, we have the side skirt wrapped, we have the little trim here wrapped, also fender, and we're working on door handles. We're trying something a little different this time. We're gonna wrap all of one side of the car. The way we usually do it is we'll, we'll do like quarter panel on one side, quarter panel on the other, do the fenders, and then we'll do the other side. We're gonna try to get one full side, side done, complete it all, just so we can see it done, and uh, I guess have that instant gratification. <laughs> we'll look at it tonight because at the end of the day whenever the projects are done or when, whenever we leave I look at my phone all night and I'm like man that looks so good we got so far but now tonight we're gonna be able to look at it almost done at least on one side so you guys wouldn't know that the other side's not done yet but yeah all of that's done we're gonna be wrapping the hood we will be wrapping the roof and we still got this whole side to do let's just keep pushing it is about 2 30 now so we still got a couple more hours in the day we can get a lot done we're gonna keep doing it let's just do what you want to, please don't be polite, cause I like your attitude. Let's forget about a curfew, cause all that is stuck in my head, it's me and you. All speed in my heart is racing, but I'm Is it gonna get wheels? Yeah. Have you guys seen them yet? Come, come. So this is something I'm probably not supposed to show you guys, but if it makes the vlog, cool. So we always put our fancy wheels right next to our pork rinds. <laughs> You guys can see here are our pork rinds. Yo! Here are I thought you were joking. <laughs> Dang. Wait, so what kind of wheels are these? So in my in my like very not vast knowledge on wheels, these are let's say and they're perfect specs for the flares. They look really sick. I believe that is a <laughs> face with a <laughs> lip and they give it a coat a <laughs> that's actually like <laughs> darker than general. I pick. see. Alright, so up? we got a customer, he asked for signatures from the whole entire crew, so we're going to sign this send it out to him, so Ooh, let's get flag. it done. Let's live life without regrets, girl put your faith in me, even though we just met. Let's forget about a curfew, cause all that is stuck in my head, it's me and you. Everything laid in real nicely. Looks like a paint job. Super clean all the way around. We also wrapped these guys here. We wrapped the, uh, what do you call these? Window visors? What I was talking about earlier is getting that tucked all the way behind there. It's not a huge difference, but it's really in the details. So, you know, the color's consistent all the way down. Johnny did a killer job with all of this. So we're getting to the end of the vlog and uh, I still have a little bit of energy. So I wanted to show you guys something. Uh, a lot of emails, a lot of questions. Uh, comments, concerns, DMs on Instagram, and then one particular time at SEMA this weekend, there was a 3M wrap that we installed and someone asked me, how'd you guys avoid adhesive lines throughout the wrap? And uh, we did 100%. So when we installed the wrap, or when we install any wrap, we make sure that there's no damage to the materials, that the materials are laying down properly, especially avoiding any type of adhesive line. You know, we're, we're not endorsed by any vinyl wrap material or brand. Uh, in the shop right now, we have a KPMF wrap over there. We have an Avery wrap going on tomorrow. And then we have a 3M wrap here. So we use all the brands across the board. And uh, there's a couple other ones that are pretty popular. Vivid, which we don't use here in the shop, and we do have our reasons why, and we've talked about that also. But I really wanna show you guys adhesive lines and how they occur, especially when you're laying a 3M uh, vinyl film. 
And also another big thing is on the gloss films in general. Any gloss films that you're installing with are very prone to adhesive lines. So in this case, we'll use a gloss film and we'll use 3M. And I'll show you guys kind of what my take is on it and how we avoid it. I'm gonna grab a piece and I'm gonna show you guys with a little bit complex bend here, what I think is happening. So when you have these films, you think about what makes them so good and what makes these films better than your cheap average eBay or Amazon film is the repositionability. The fact that you're able to lift it up, replace it multiple times, it makes that film very unique and very special in a sense for us in the wrap world because we're able to replace the panel multiple times. And uh, I think what happens is sometimes that gets overused. When you start replacing these panels multiple times, the adhesive sets, then you lift it up and you heat it and you reposition it, and that's when the adhesive lines occur. So right now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna lay this film the way I would just go about it and the way I would, you know, avoid these adhesives, adhesive lines as best as possible. So we got an aggressive bend here. I'm gonna lay into that first. So right now the material's floating off and yeah, you might be using a bigger panel at times and it's a lot easier to get these adhesive lines. But right now we'll start off, we'll just lay it in the recess. See that I lifted it up there. So right now what I did is nothing perfect here. What I did is I just laid the material, I made it around a bend and uh, avoided any adhesive lines. Another thing I'm able to do is go in and heat out any of the abrasions from the squeegee. Keep in mind that this panel wasn't prepped or anything. We haven't clay barred it. The surface isn't clean 100%. Uh, so you're gonna have a little bit of bubbles here and there, but this is just more for the demo purpose of an adhesive line in general. Now let's do one where we actually create an adhesive line, right? Mm -hmm. When you're dealing with big panels and you're not glassing the material and you don't have multiple hands on hand to help you out, uh, it does get a little more difficult. It is more challenging. So doing it solo, I can see why there'd be issues, but let's just lay the material again. And this is how I see adhesive lines occurring, is when this happens. Somebody gives it some heat, pull a little bit too much to glass the film, and then they feed it into place. Maybe lifting it up to reposition it. Which is very normal to do that with films, but with some colors you have to be extra careful. Then we'll go ahead and heat it again, give it a little bit of a stretch, pull it down and then we'll let it cool a little bit. And in this case, an installer might want to lift it back up to reposition it. And then they're gonna give it heat again because they need to clean up the film. They pull it back. And at this point, they start creating adhesive lines, which you're gonna start seeing. So right now, I focused on laying this area. I did reposition the film a couple times. I did give it a little bit of heat uh, and I did get an adhesive line. And uh, it's not something that you, as just somebody walking by the car, would probably notice. It's an installer thing. You know, us as installers, we gotta be very detail-oriented. We have to see these things. And uh, ultimately, it's something in the industry that we've all dealt with at some point or another. So in this case, I got an adhesive line here. I'll show you guys. And really what it is, is knowing your films, wh which ones you're working with, what colors you're working with, because all of them are a little bit different. Every brand's a little different. Uh, but what I think is really happening is when you're placing these panels and you're not glassing them, uh, and you're just kind of feeding into place and then having to stretch certain areas, picking up and lifting, that's causing the adhesive line. So that's exactly what I did over here is I picked it up a couple times, replaced it, gave it a little bit of heat, and we got a pretty good line right here. This is the adhesive line right here that we actually got. This is right here, it's a nice good line. You can only see it in certain angles. Uh, like I said earlier, it's something that only a very like detail-oriented person is actually gonna spot and find. Uh, but like I said, what happened here, the biggest reason why this actually happened was I fed the material in, then I lifted it up and I repositioned the material. And yes, that's built into these films is to be able to have that ability to do so, but it's not to be overused. You know, if you guys are looking to install vinyl, I don't know if a lot of you guys are installing vinyl on the channel or not. If you guys are, comment below. I really wanna know who's vinyl installers, who's not. Also, if you guys have dealt with this, uh, yes, there's brands that are having more issues than others. Uh, and I guess the industry feedback is super important, period. Like, we need to communicate because uh, as the market evolves, we want these films to evolve as well. And the only way the films are going to evolve is when people speak up and actually talk about the issues that are happening. If you guys aren't in the vinyl industry and you don't know what I'm talking about and you don't care, all good. This segment is more for the people that are really focused on rapping. And I'd like to know, like I said, I don't know our channel too well if you guys are all vinyl wrap installers out there, or if you guys are just vinyl enthusiasts, or car enthusiasts, premium enthusiasts, YouTube enthusiasts, I don't know. Comment below, let me know why you guys watch the channel. Uh, other than that, 
Today you guys seen us lay a bunch of panels on the on the Subaru. We're gonna be doing a bunch tomorrow. Uh, I don't know how much we're gonna film tomorrow because it's gonna basically be the same amount of stuff we did today. Uh, maybe when we get to the bumpers, we'll film that. We'll also film the car going back together and then an overall reveal so you can see what it looks like when it's done. New wheels, uh, fender overs, uh, a couple other things are gonna go on, on this car. So it's gonna be a cool reveal when it's done and uh, I'm excited to show you guys. But that's the end of this vlog. Hope you guys enjoyed it. It is a little bit more tutorial based. It is more rap based. I know a lot of you guys have been asking for that. If you want to see more rap related content, comment below. Let us know what's going on. Let us know what you guys think. Thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you guys in the next one.